count down. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I'm Jim Munchback, and we're getting ready to start a new lesson in personal finance. And we are live, should be live on the YouTube and Facebook, several channels. So now I'm going to jump into the Zoom room and get it started. So welcome if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook. Welcome, welcome. And give me just a minute and I will start the Zoom room. Recording in progress. Recording in progress. So it looks like we've got some folks waiting. I'm going to in invite some folks to enter. Uh, welcome if you're in the Zoom room. I'm hoping that we have the link corrected from last week. I know that was a an interesting technology glitch. I'm not positive what happened, but it looks like we've got several folks in the room, and so it looks like it's working. Yay! I hope that's so. I'm I am going to ask you to do me a favor. Um, so as usual, if you will chat in that you are here and what time you got here. That's uh, the way we take roll. Welcome this morning. It's about 10.02 a.m. What is this? 13 February, Tuesday, 13 February, year of our Lord, 2024. So uh, thank you, Gavin. Hey, Gavin, will you do me a favor? Uh, would you jump into group me and just see if there's, make sure everybody has the link. I'm going to grab the link. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure everybody does, but let me just copy the invite link and I'm going to paste it into the chat. And if anyone in the group me, uh, can you do that for me, please? If Just leave a chat. Let me know if you can do that, Gavin. If not, I'll ask somebody else to do it. And I'm assuming you guys can hear me okay. Please let me know if you could chat in and say, yes, you hear me. Thanks, Gavin. You got it. I appreciate it. Oh, looks like we are going to jump into, let me get some things out of my way. All uh, righty. So we're going to start on assignment five here in a few minutes. You're going to get to meet Billy and Sally, and I'll tell you a little bit about their story. Uh, and I'm assuming I got too many screens. Uh, anyone, can you, Kendall, can you tell me, can you hear me okay? I'm assuming you can. Uh, otherwise, I usually get folks telling me you can't. Okay, cool, thanks. No echoes, no weird noises. Mm. I hope. Okay, it's 10.04. I am kind of under the weather. Uh, my wife and I are both kind of <clears throat> kind of under the weather. I don't know what it is, but puffy eyes, coffee, coffee, itchy throat. Uh, we've had some strep throat in the family with little Mr. Caleb, my grandson. So... Today is going to probably be a short, short lecture, I'm hoping. Um, it shouldn't take long. We're going to jump into the assignment number five, consumerism, consumer awareness, consumers anonymous. I'm going to introduce you to Billy and Sally. Uh, Billy and Sally are the folks we're going to jump into there. In fact, I'm going to jump into their financial plan here in a minute. Oh, Billy, let's go, Billy. I meant to have Billy's plan open. This is just a financial plan that I created for our class avatar, Billy and Sally. So you'll get to meet them in terms of their financial plan. I'm going to walk you through their plan and just show you what you will be doing this week in your assignment as we set up the uh, credit crush assignment. So credit crush is two assignments, really. Um, the first one is just to get things set up in your right capital financial planning portal. And then next week, you will actually do the credit crush assignment. So I'm going to show you how to get it set up 
so that you are in good shape to do that, to do the assignment for next week. But this week's assignment is really pretty easy. Um, last week's assignment was the credit report. Credit, and many of you shared your credit score with me as well, but the assignment was your credit report. And I encouraged you last week to not only do your credit report uh, right now, which you did, those of you who have social security numbers did, and the rest of you did the uh, assignment for uh, how to invest. So, um, oh, the credit, that was two weeks ago, wasn't it? That was week three. That was week, okay, I'm missing week four. Week four was actually uh, the parental interview, and I'm still grading those, so uh, I'll give you a couple of notes about that. Um, before I do that, though, let me just get out of here, and we'll talk about this week's class collaboration uh, here in a minute. I'm gonna. It should. We should be time to good time to start. Last week was a parental. Thanks, Greg. I appreciate that. Yeah, I figured that out about halfway through. I was having maybe what you call a Biden moment. I'm not sure if that's an appropriate thing to say. I might get canceled from YouTube for even thinking that. I don't know. But yep, sometimes we forget. Uh, yeah, last week was the parental interview, and it was. Uh, it was, it is my favorite assignment to read. You guys did a great job. Uh, and the class collaboration from last week was about student debt forgiveness. I really appreciated your comments and sharing. Uh, I do want to kind of point out, though, this uh, weekly class collaboration, the one that I share in the, um, the one that I share in the, um, secret class collaboration this moment i'm about to share it uh canceled gavin you said canceled what was canceled i don't understand the smiley face canceled uh i'm, I'm waiting for a response there gavin because i'm concerned something was canceled <clears throat> uh, the joke you mentioned oh thank you i'm canceled Oh, bummer. I feel canceled now. Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> Hopefully that's, yeah, LOL. Good. So, yeah, last week's uh, comment, another Biden moment, I guess, uh, student loan forgiveness. I think that was President Biden's idea for the most part. Uh, the Supreme Court didn't seem to like it too well, but that didn't stop anybody from pushing forward. I think it's about getting votes. I, I shared that last week that if I were in your shoes uh, and I had student loans, I would, with, I'm, I'm just sure I would vote for whoever was offering to help me in any way possible. And that would be a nice help. I paid my student loans off. It took me 10 years to pay off my student loans. And I didn't really have that many student loans, but I didn't make that much money either. And so I just wanted you to know I appreciated your comments, both sides, uh, lots and lots of comments and some strong feelings. And I really appreciate, mainly I appreciate you guys sharing. And when I talk about sharing, I don't just mean in the class collaboration, but your, uh, your assignment last week where you shared your stories about your first memories of money and your parental interviews. Those, it's my favorite assignment to read, to grade, and I have several more still to do for those of you who didn't take advantage of the early assignment submission. And it's about half of you, so <clears throat> um, I still have lots to grade. One thing I want to point out just as a kind of housekeeping note is when we do these secret class collaboration uh, ideas, it's, it's really intended to make sure that you're watching the Zoom meetings. Um, I, I hate to do that, but I've come to believe from experience that at least half the students in this course just don't watch the Zoom lecture. And this is an asynchronous course, and uh, I've asked you all to share how you feel about that. And there are many students who just don't do it, even now. So look for deductions 
in your assignment submissions if you're not including this class collaboration comment. And here's a little point I want to highlight. Several of you submitted this you know, secret class collaboration, and you just put it in your article, which is fine. I mean, it's not really fine. It's not okay. I did not give you deductions this week for doing that. But moving forward, I want what I want you to do is treat this specific class collaboration component the same as you treat the others. Most of you who submitted your secret class collaboration comment in the article instead of posting it, like you didn't post it, you just put it in your article, which made me know you watched the Zoom meeting, which was good. But I tried to give you comments that those comments need to be posted just like the others. And you've done a great job of posting. Uh, and I just want to highlight again, the class collaboration elements are just peppered throughout the course and money study group. And my objective for you, my hope for you, my uh, instruction to you about posting on all of those different ones is you don't have to post on all of them. You certainly do not. But I do want you to pick some that are interesting to you and that intrigue you or that help you learn something. And I want you to comment on those and just grab a screenshot, put it in your article, and you should have a couple, two or three or four. You know, you can have more than that. Some of you, many of you had more than that, but at least a couple of class collaboration comments need to be in your, in each week's assignment. And certainly for sure, this secret one, which this week I'll talk about, uh, talk about what it is. You can see it on the screen if you're watching. So I will be talking about that in a minute. <clears throat> uh, so this week is the credit crush setup. Now I'm going to keep looking into the comments. If you have any questions, feel free to post those. If you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, maybe it's two in the morning and you have a question or a comment, I read those. I appreciate those. Uh, and so feel free to let me know you're watching on YouTube or Facebook. And if you have a question or a comment, uh, just post it. And so I, but if you're in the meeting, if you're in the Zoom meeting right now, we have a good number of students in the meeting. And if you're here, I always want you to know that this is your time to ask anything you want to ask. And you can either ask it in the chat or you can speak up, unmute yourself, and I appreciate that. I don't pressure you guys to unmute yourself and have a conversation with me. I, I miss that, though. When we were in class together, it was always like um, my favorite thing to do is to interact, answer questions. I'm always, almost always, when I answer a question, I would tell a story. And when you don't ask questions, I don't get to tell stories. So that's kind of fun. So if you have a question, post it. I'm going to keep looking over there. That's my MacBook. I've got several screens here, and that's the one I look at for. So if you wonder why I keep looking over there, that's why. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this, uh, and I'm going to... So first thing I'm going to do is I am going to talk about this week's class collaboration because we're talking about uh, consumerism and it follows up on the credit report and uh, it's really um, consumerism is something that really dominates our culture. I call this I refer to it as a culture of consumerism. And I have been referring to our culture as a culture of consumerism for over 20 years. But today, I would say it's even more true than it has been in the past. And the reason that's important to you, the reason that I want you to think about this idea of living in a culture of consumerism in the context of credit and debt and the idea that we've been talking about, the whole I love credit score, and the fact that credit is, uh, it's a product. It's not a privilege. It's not an entitlement. It's not something that you should look at as something that you deserve. It's, it's a product. And it's being sold to you. Credit 
and debt is being sold to you in an unbelievably sophisticated way so that you, your group, your, your target market is pounded with the idea that even though you may not be able to afford it, you can afford it because we will make it available to you through credit. And some of you, many of you mentioned in this conversation about student loan forgiveness, how it is made so easy for you to get that, that student loan. So, and I think that's true. And I think it's one reason why after reading so many of your comments about student loan forgiveness and how you feel about it, it just seems to fit into this big idea that I'm trying to communicate to you this semester about credit and the use of credit. And so I hope you will continue to think about uh, that as we jump into this lesson and next week's lesson, Credit Crush. The Credit Crush assignment is about understanding, recognizing, being aware that you live in a culture of consumerism and you are a big target. So I want to help you, equip you, prepare you, teach you how to deal with credit and debt in a way that is effective and that will prevent you from falling into the traps that so many, so many Americans and others fall into. And it's just the most common pitfall in a culture of consumerism that you spend more than you earn. And the first law of personal finance is the law of spending and saving. And it's all about uh, spending Spend less than you earn so that you can save more for what matters most. So this week's class collaboration is the secret class collaboration is a question that I want you to think about. I want you to talk about. I really want you to to really think about the idea of being debt free. So what does that mean to you? What do you think that would be like for you to be debt free? Is it something that you have in your in in your life's horizon is it something that you want to do to be debt free or is it something that you've already decided that debt and credit is a part of uh, your financial life and your financial plan to be in debt so i'm going to tell you a story now uh, i'm going to tell you a story about my wife connie she probably wouldn't love the fact that I'm sharing her pictures all over the internet right now. Maybe she would. That's Caleb. When I talk about my grandson, Caleb, that's Caleb. And you should see some pictures of Maddie, our granddaughter, but I don't know if we have any here. So these are pictures of me, mostly Connie, my wife. I wanted you to meet Connie, my Connie, the love of my life, the bride of my youth. Uh, Connie is the best part of me. So she's my wife. And when I got married, when we got married, I made pretty good money. I was an auto mechanic. We met in college, and I was making really good money. I was a certified master mechanic. So even as a college student, I was able to make pretty decent money as a college student working as a mechanic most of the time. Sometimes I was without a job. In fact, when we got married, we got married um, December I want to say 14th. I, I always forget the date. I think it was December 14th. But the year that we got married, I was working as an auto mechanic in this town, Springfield, Missouri, where we met, where we went to college at Baptist Bible College in Springfield, Missouri. And we were we were going to get married. And I was working at a as a mechanic at J.C. Penney. So I worked as a mechanic mostly in retail. I worked at J.C. Penney. I worked at Montgomery Ward. That company's gone bankrupt since. Sears, uh, Goodyear, Firestone. I worked at all these different retail outlets that had automotive service. And that's it was always easy to find a job because I had certifications and I was experienced. But anyway, I found this really good job at J.C. Penney. It was awesome because they let me work part-time hours, like they let me work nights and weekends. And they had some really awesome mechanics, some older gentlemen. 
uh, Frank and Bill. They were my mentors, and they were teaching me so much, and it was just a wonderful, wonderful experience for a job. But I had this boss named Dan. He was really a great boss. Um, but I told him I was getting married over Christmas, and I was going to go home for my honeymoon, and I wanted to make sure it was cool to get some time off. And Dan said, no. <laughs> He said, no, I hired you to be the part-time fill-in to work evenings and weekends. And if you're not here, I'll have to replace you. I'm like, but dude, I'm getting married. He's like, well, that's, you know, you, you should have thought about that before you, because I hadn't been working there that long. And he was like, no, this was, I hired you to f cover for the holiday season because my main guys, my full-time guys are going to be off. So anyway came back from getting married and I was sure like no way he'll really do that but he did he terminated me so during college there was a season of my life as a very newly married dude where I had to go find any job to make ends meet and I worked at this place that was a nightmare called Vermilion and it, it was just uh it was it was a it was depressing. So if you're in college and you're working and you've had trouble finding a job every now and again, uh, well, I, I can relate. But this woman, Connie, during some season in our life uh, as we were young, we decided, she, she helped me uh, recognize that our credit was a disaster, because I had, because I made decent money, I went out and I bought whatever I wanted, basically. And we were buying things that were uh, rent to own. It was super easy to go out and buy, like we had a dining room set, furniture, living room furniture. And these items, they were very cheap, you know, like first first time you buy furniture, you buy cheap furniture. We did anyway. And that furniture was cheap furniture, but we were renting to own. So if you know anything about rent to own, you know you get <laughs> cheap furniture for a quality furniture price, which is what I did. I went out, I wanted it, we needed it. So I bought it, put it on credit. And my wife helped me see one day that our credit was just really bad. Not, not that we had bad credit, we were paying all of our bills, but she was the one paying the bills and she was noticing something that I want you to notice that is really the reason that the credit crush assignment came into existence is because of this experience that I had with my wife, Connie, when we were experiencing financial disaster. But the disaster was that we had all these credit card bills and they really weren't credit cards. They were credit accounts like we were paying, renting to own, living room furniture, kitchen furniture, and we had a couple of other things too. But the point was they made it really easy for us to get this credit and we were paying the minimums. My wife again was the one paying the bills and she was paying the minimums and the balances kept going up. And she recognized that when she's paying the bills and she sat me down and she explained it to me because I wasn't very smart and I certainly was not paying attention to our finances. <laughs> I was not paying attention to the fact that we were not only getting buried in debt, but we were quickly snowballing into debt because we were paying the minimum on our loans. And so that's what happened uh, early in my marriage. And my wife and I decided we were going to change that. But it took many, many years for us to get to the point where we were able to finally become debt free. And that's really this week's, uh, my wife is texting me and I see it on my screen. She's been sick. Uh, as I said, and we're both under the weather. She's asking me how I'm feeling, but I'm not going to respond to her text messages right now, and I don't guess you can see them. Uh, but anyway, what I was going to tell you the story is my wife and I, we, we knew as young people, you know, still in college, that we wanted to one day be out of debt. Well, in 1995, I think that's when Hurricane Andrew hit. I, I was a State Farm agent, and I was a, an independent claims adjuster. I did that as a side hustle because when I worked for State Farm, 
as an employee before I became an agent of State Farm. I was in the claims department, and I always always wor- would go around the country and work these catastrophes. I worked uh, Hurricane Andrew in uh, Hurricane Andrew was in '93, I think. And I worked that like two days after Andrew. I was there in Homestead. I lived in Key Largo, and I made, I made, I got paid like fifty bucks a day, which was pretty cool as an employee making twenty-five grand a year. It was not a bad gig. It was a lot of fun, and you learned a ton about adjusting claims. It was a fantastic experience. And then I worked the earthquake, the Northridge earthquake. I worked all around the country. I became a trainer, training. I would train auto claims adjusters who would come in to help out in the fire claims department. So that was my job, and that's what I did. But I did not make a lot of money, and I always noticed these independent claims adjusters who were making a lot of money, and they were getting paid on a fee schedule. So if they wrote an estimate for hundred grand, they would get like 4% of that. That's like $4,000, and they were racking up a lot of money. So in 2005, when Hurricane Katrina hit, I know I said Hurricane Andrew, I think, a few minutes ago. But when Hurricane Katrina hit, by then I was a State Farm agent in Clear Lake, Texas, but I had kept my insurance license, my adjusting license. So I went out and worked. A friend of mine owned a company, uh, an independent adjusting firm, and he got some good contracts. And so he invited me to come work Hurricane Katrina. Well, I made, in six months, I made enough money to pay off our house. So I'm sitting there with over $100,000 in our checking account, which had never really happened to me before. And um, my, my wife really wanted to use that money to pay off our mortgage because my wife, Connie, she believed that being debt-free was something that was really worth working for. And me, on the other hand, I believed it in my head, but it wasn't like a super big goal for me because I like to invest. And I knew that I could take that money and I could invest that hundred thousand, hundred and whatever, and I could make money. And I hated to lose that opportunity. At the time, we had a mortgage that was only like 3.85%. So think about that. If you've got a mortgage that's a low mortgage and you get a tax deduction, it it kind of made sense to me as a certified financial planner that maybe the smartest thing to do would be to not pay off that loan. But um, my wife felt very differently and she really wanted to pay off our mortgage. And so I thought about it. And because I love my wife and I cared about what she wanted and what she thought and what she felt, even though I didn't agree with it, I didn't think it was the smart move. And she wasn't like demanding that we did it, but she really wanted me to know how she felt about it. So I chose to go ahead and pay off our mortgage. And that's when something surprising happened to me. Uh, It didn't happen to my wife. She wasn't surprised by it because she knew that being debt-free would give her a sense of freedom, financial freedom, that was something we never had before because we'd always had, ever since we got married, we always had debt. I told you I had student loans for 10 years after I graduated. Well, by the time 2000, uh, what was it, 2005, Hurricane Katrina, by the time that came along, we had a mortgage. We didn't have any other any other debt that I can recall. But we did have the mortgage, and to pay that mortgage off meant we would be 100% debt-free. And, you know, I di- we did it. We paid off our mortgage, and we were 100% debt-free. And I experienced something that I did not expect. And that's why I want you guys to think about it. What I experienced was a sense of financial freedom that I didn't expect. I didn't realize how it would feel to actually owe nobody anything, to owe zero money to anybody. And so it was was a cool experience for me. Today, we're debt-free. I mean, I have credit cards that I pay off every month. Um, 
and I hate it when something happens and I don't pay it off. Like sometimes my credit card expiration comes along and that card's not working. And so, or not my card, I, I, several things happen along the way where I end up not paying off a credit card immediately. Usually it's, yeah, I pay off something and then I don't have enough money to pay off that credit card in my account and it's an auto payment and I end up with fees and I hate that. So I usually go back and ask them to forgive the fees and often they do. But uh, anyway, my point is that being debt free, it's a way of life. It's something you may not have thought about something you may not have considered. And in the context of this course, personal finance, in the context especially of the credit crush assignment that we're going to talk about here now, I want you to think about what would it be like for you to be debt-free. That is this week's uh, class collaboration uh, question. So that is what I want you guys to think about, talk about, and post your comments. And I know, you know, it could be a one-liner. It could be a conversation you have with yourself or with someone you care about. But that's what I'm going to ask you guys to comment on this week. So thanks for that. Okay, I'm going to jump into... Uh, I'm going to get rid of me. And I'm going to turn this into... Hold on for a second. I am going to jump into Billy Bob's plan. So you should be seeing, let me get rid of this noisy banner. So this is uh, a Wright Capital Bayrock financial plan. And you see Billy and Sally. And uh, <clears throat> I usually tell the story about Billy and Sally, but I'm going to let you grab that story from Money Study Group, how I met Billy. And uh, I'm going to tell it briefly, though. Billy Billy was a guy that I met uh, at a Firestone. He was getting his car worked on. And I'm going to hold on. Okay, sorry, I had a little something flash up. I met Billy at a Firestone. He was getting his, he was getting new tires on his truck. I was getting work done on my car. And it was the very first semester that I taught personal finance at the University of Houston. And I was getting ready to teach this lesson. And I wasn't really sure, at that time, I wasn't sure about any of the lessons. <laughs> the big idea of the course had not yet been uh, developed. And anyway, I met Billy and I was just a curious dude. He was in college. He was going to San Jack. He just graduated from San Jack with a technical degree. So, I mean, we hit it off and I'm getting to know him. And he's driving an F-150 pickup truck, which I happen to think is. In fact, I don't think it. I know if you know anything about the F-150, I wish I had a button where I could push and show you pictures of Ford F-150, the number one most popular vehicle in automotive history. Don't know if you knew that, but it's true. And Billy owned one. And I always thought if I ever had a truck, I'd want to have one of those. Today, I'm the proud owner of a 2006 Ford F-350. It's not a 150. It's a 350 diesel because I have an RV that I need to pull, and it pulls it nicely. But at any rate, Billy had an F-150, and he was there to get tires. And I'm asking him. He had a coupon to buy some cheap you know, tires that were on sale at Firestone. And that's when old Billy met Sally because Sally was the salesperson at Firestone. And Billy was going to buy these cheap tires, but Sally helped him understand how much better his truck would look. And in fact, I think, I watched, I believe, I saw Sally help Billy understand how much better he would look if he put these nice white wall tires on his truck instead of his uh, cheap black wall tires that were on sale. Not only did she help him understand how much better his truck would look and how much better he would look if he upgraded the tires, but she also helped him upgrade the wheels. And so if we were in class together and we were able to look each other in the eye, as I tell this story, I would ask a ton of questions so that you could tell me, what do you think happened next? What do you think happened next? And at the end of the day, that whole story, 
uh, is quite fascinating because at the end of the day, what happened is Sally sold Billy. He came in with a coupon to buy tires. She sold him an upgrade on the tires, an upgrade on the wheels. He ended up needing to get some work done on the vehicle so that he could get it aligned, which is a good idea. In order to align a vehicle, you have three angles. The camber, that's when the wheels go like this. The caster, think about a shopping cart, the front wheels. Those angles are what make it pull to one direction or the other. And then the toe, that's when the tires are not in alignment like the toe. Think about your toes. Those are the three angles that you have to adjust on the vehicle to make sure your tires don't wear out. And so if you've ever bought new tires and your vehicle's out of alignment, it can chew those tires up pretty quick. So I'm watching Sally and I'm, I mean, I'm a master mechanic, so I, I knew everything she was telling Billy was true. He had some loose parts in his truck. He needed to get them replaced. So the whole bill turned out to be over 20, about $2,500. So one of the ways that Sally sold Billy this deal is, look, yeah, you came in to buy $400 tires, but you know, you're getting new tires that are really good looking with great wheels. You're getting your vehicle fixed up. It's going to be good for, you know, for a long time and 2,500 bucks. And she helped him put it on a credit card, a Firestone credit card with very low payments, very low minimum payments and a relatively low interest rate. And so this is where I would be asking you, what do you think the interest rate would be if you did that today? If you went to Firestone to buy some tires and you ended up having to buy a $2,500 package, which, by the way, that package back in 2012, that's when I started teaching this course. And I remember that date. I'm not going to say Joe Biden and being vice president, and I can't remember when I was. That's That would be inappropriate for me to say, but I do remember it was 2012, I think. I hope I'm right. But anyway, back then, if you spent $2,500 on your vehicle compared to today, and I'm not going to blame Joe Biden for the inflation. That would be wrong, too. and Inappropriate, and I'd get canceled, just like Gavin said. So again, though, think about it. If it were today and you had an F-150 pickup truck and you took it into Firestone to get tires, rims, alignment, front end work, it would be a lot more than $2,500. So uh, anyway, back then it was $2,500. And that's what set up the credit crush assignment, which I'm about to show you now. So if we go into Billy's... Um, we go into Billy's plan, you'll see this is just like your plan. I, I want to spend a minute here and just talk about the navigation of your plan because I don't think we've done that. So you see right now you, you start out in your dashboard with a snapshot and your snapshot's going to look different. So you've got upper navigation. That is, you've got the navigation up right there at the very top. But then you've also got navigation, the lower navigation, which is right by my head, like snapshot is right there and balance sheet. So you've got all those lower navigation. So I want you just to pay attention to that for a minute. And I'm going to jump over to profile. And you see, again, in each of these upper navigation tabs, you have lower navigation tabs. So when I say upper navigation or lower navigation, that's what I'm talking about. So here we have profile for the upper navigation and you see net worth there. And you guys, some of you have changed your birthday or if you haven't, you may not know where to do that. So that's the lower navigation family, okay? So this assignment that you're gonna do the credit crush setup, one of the things you're going to do is you're going to change your birthday so that you're 10 years older than you actually are. So <clears throat> April 15th is actually my birthday. So if you want to remember me on tax day, that's what I want you to do, though. And I'll tell you why in a minute. But I want you to up, update your birthday for this assignment so that you are 10 years older. 
That's number one. The next thing I want you to do is I want you to add some debt. I want you to add a credit card with at least, and this is all in the instructions, by the way. You don't have to remember everything I'm saying. It is in your Canvas instructions. But I just kind of wanted to walk you through so you could see how it happens in your financial plan. And I'm showing you Billy's plan uh, for now so you can see that. Ooh, that's an ugly camera take. I think I'll go back here. <clears throat> I mean, it's ugly no matter how you look at it, really. But uh, yeah, I'm feeling ugly today, too. You ever have those days where you just feel ugly? Your eyes are all swollen. I mean, you guys never have those kind of days. Bad hair days. That's what it is. It's a bad hair day. Okay, I'm going to get rid of my face so you can just see... So what we have here is some credit card accounts for Billy and Sally. I'm going to show you how we're going to play with those in a minute. Um, and there you have Firestone Tires. That's because that $2,500 account that was supposed to be six months, same as cash. Six, that's one of the ways they sold this to Billy at Firestone is, look, Sally said, you can... Uh, pay this off in six months and pay no interest. And Billy was like, that's a great idea. He was living at home at the time, uh, you know, living with his parents. He didn't have a truck payment because he kind of, his uncle made him a super, super deal on the truck. So he had money. He was working. In fact, I, Billy was working at the Marathon plant. And at the time, Marathon in Texas City has a plant. And at the time, I had a vending machine business. It was a little side hustle that I did for my son. Had 19 vending machines that we would go and stock, Coke, sodas and snacks and whatnot. Every week, you had to go and take the dollar bills out of the machine. There'd be tons of dollar bills. It didn't really make a lot of money, but it made some. But that's why, one reason why I clicked with Billy, because he worked at the marath Marathon station, station plant the same one that I had my machines in. Um, but anyway, Billy's Firestone, uh, he thought he'd be able to pay it off. It, it made sense. It sounded good. So why not? Sally did a great job selling Billy. And the way she did it, one of the ways was this credit, easy credit, low payment, low interest rate, six months, same as cash. Think about that. The problem was Billy decided, well, he didn't decide, but before too long, what happened with Billy and Sally is they became a couple. They, they really hit it off. And so once they started, you know, living together and well, first they just started partying. Now they're married, but they just started partying and spending money and got an apartment and things just kind of piled up. And just like me and Connie in our marriage, uh, things were um, piling up on us. And that's what happened to Billy. So his credit card bill to Firestone didn't get paid off. And his account, you'll see in a minute what happened and how it turned from 2500 to 5500 But what I want you to do this week is I want you to set up a credit card account with at least ten grand. I want you to go spend some money, imaginary money, on your credit card and I want you to do some research and I want you to research and figure out what kind of interest rate are you going to have on your credit card with this new $10,000 spending spree you're going to go on. That's number one, credit card debt. Number two is I want you to do the same thing Billy did. Um, I want you to put some, I want you to go buy a vehicle. So down here in loan, um, you see Sally has a Tesla, and Billy has a Ford F-250 toy hauler, and so th those are the vehicles. So if we go to the vehicles, you'll see the data card for his vehicles, and you want to look at that. Um, can we do, do, do? So th this is what you're going to see. It's a car loan, okay? The way you do that is you add an account, a loan. And you figure out which kind of loan it is. So that's what you're going to do. I'm going to delete that if I can. Boom. If you make a mistake, you just hit delete and you delete it. So that's what I want you to do. I want you to put money on a credit card. So you're going to 
spend 10 grand on a cre- with a credit card, imaginary, but you have to do a little research and figure out how much interest that credit card is going to charge. And then I want you to do the same thing with an auto loan, and I want you to buy your dream car, okay? The reason we're doing this, by the way, is I want to teach you how to manage credit, and the Credit Crush assignment is all about learning some strategies for managing debt. So if you have no debt, it this, this, the assignment, the lesson won't work. So don't worry about the fact that you're messing with your financial plan. You can easily go back and put your financial plan back into accurate order with the correct birthday and with the, all the correct information. It'll be super easy to do. But for now, for the next couple of weeks and really for the rest of the semester, I want you to start pretending that you <clears throat> are uh, graduated You've got the job that you really want after you graduate, and you're making the kind of money that you would make if you get the job you really want in your field. So those are lots of assumptions that I want you to to take on starting this week. And the way I'm going to know that you're, you're doing that is I'm going to look at your financial plan. Actually, you're going to show me screenshots of your financial plan showing me that you've made these edits, these updates to your plan. Ten years older, you're now making some money. <clears throat> now I'm going to jump back over here into, so you see I'm in profile right there. Profile, lower navigation, I'm going to go to income. This is where you're going to update your data card for income and again you're going to pretend that you're making a salary based on hello let me get that out of there you're going to pretend that you're making the salary that you would make in your uh, the job that you really want to get so that's where you do that is you change income Um, and You don't have to do it this week, but just a heads up, I want you to know that you're also going to be doing some savings. So you're going to be adding a 401k. You don't have to do that this week. But again, this plan, your plan moving forward and and your capstone assignment in particular is based on you being 10 years older, you've graduated, and so these are the elements that I'm going to be asking you to do. But this week for the setup, I just want you to add 10 years to your birthday, and I want you to add some debt to your plan. Three things. Number one is credit card, 10 grand at least. Go have fun, spend some money. And do a little research to convince me that you know what kind of interest rate you're going to pay on that credit card and what your payment's going to be and what your minimum payment's going to be. You're going to need that when we get to next week when we do the credit crush assignment. This is just the setup. Number two, I want you to go buy a car. Buy, do some research. Figure out what car you would really want to buy based on uh, you know, what, what vehicle you really want to buy. Usually that includes the idea of how far are you going to be traveling for work, which brings up the next big item on this week's assignment, and that is you're going to buy a house. <clears throat> so you'll notice in this loan we have a mortgage, and you're going to have a mortgage, and you're going to have to do a little work to figure out, okay, what kind of house can you afford making the kind of money that you're going to be making in this imaginary job that you hope you get when you graduate. That's the first part of the research for your mortgage. But then you're going to have to figure out how much money do you have to put down on a mortgage. Now, this is all very easy information to find with a, a Google search or, you know, read a few blogs. But you are going to have to do a little research to convince me that you've got a clue about how these things work. So I would just encourage you to pretend that you're actually looking for a house and you actually have a job. Let's say you work at Shell and you're going to be living, you know, on I-10 on the corridor and you want to buy a house in Katy. Just you figure out the scenario for you. But then that's how I want you to go about this assignment in this research to find the house that you can afford Do a little research so that it makes sense. If it makes sense to you, it'll probably make sense to me, but you got to make sense to me. I I want to know how much you're going to spend, how much you're going to put down, what's your interest rate going to be, how long you're going to take to pay it off. All of those things go into the mortgage. So uh, when I click on the mortgage, that's the mortgage. You see 
and make sure you do this, make sure you have mortgage selected. Um, and some of you are going to have, uh, so you, if your property, if you own your property, then you're going to be able to link the property to the mortgage. Okay, here's a little heads up. Some of you are not going to realize that you, the default here is that you rent. So you're going to have to go into your primary home and you're going to have to say, I own it. Once you put a mortgage in there and you change that to own, then you can link it to the property. So that's what you're going to want to do. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Three things you're going to do. Credit card, you're going to buy a car, you're going to buy a house. Four things includes update your birthday so you're 10 years older. So now I'm going to jump over here and see if I have any questions in Zoom. I don't see any questions. If you're watching on YouTube or Facebook and you have a question, feel free to ask the question. I am going to get back to the screen. And I'm going to end it there unless you have some questions or want to talk about this assignment more. Again, this is just the setup for the um, Credit Crush assignment. Next week, we'll talk about the actual assignment. And I'll show you, in fact, <clears throat> I'll show you when we get to the Credit Crush assignment, you're going to do that. I'm going to show you a couple things before I let you go. Um, just quickly. So... If you go to if you go to dashboard upper navigation dashboard and you go to debt this is where the credit crush assignment is going to happen you have these action items and this is where you can change the strategy of your debt and that's what you're going to do I can't get that to get bigger but you've got three options and you're going to see that once you add your debt you have all these options that you can do uh, to decide to determine to figure out what is the best strategy for you to pay off your debt that's built into this system it's a fantastic tool and I want you to understand it so that's why I'm asking you to set up some imaginary debt so that you have the data in your plan to do the credit crush assignment so we'll come back and talk about that next week and all of the information that's there but that's where you're going to find it is dashboard debt okay so that's just a heads up now I want to also show you because I I mentioned linking your accounts and again if you want to link your account you go to profile net worth and you link your account you click aggregation you type in the institution let's say for example that you bank with Chase so you hit Chase and you have to then put in your credentials and that will aggregate it will link your account and again I am not trying to sell you on the idea of linking your accounts in Bayrock. I just want you to know what happens when you do that. This is a premium financial planning portal that I use with my wealth management clients, and I make it available to you so that you can learn and grow and understand, but also so you can have some cool stuff to, to mess around with as you learn. So this is one of, the, one of the things I wanted to show you is if you link your accounts and only if you link your accounts will you have access to this budgeting tool. If you don't link your accounts you'll have to use some other tool to do your budget which is no problem. I just want you to know if you do want to use this tool you have to link your accounts and then there's activity and you get all kinds of data. Now in this case I wanted to also show you that when I click on transactions here as the advisor it says I can't see them because you have the ability to say I don't want my advisor to see my transactions. So I can see activity, I can see the overview, I can see that, but I can't see, in this case, I can't see the actual uh, transactions. And you'll recall, just the last thing I'm going to say is you will recall that when you do your spending plan, uh, at the end of the semester, I've asked you to select a tool that you're going to use to track your spending for the whole semester, and I'm going to ask you to show me the data because I want to hold you accountable for keeping accountable 
in every transaction and every dollar, every penny that you spend this semester. So if you use Chase or Bank of America, <clears throat> your banking app will capture every single transaction. If you told me you're going to use Excel, I'm saying that's not a good idea. You will not get full credit on that assignment. I'm just telling you, because you'll miss stuff. The student that uses an app to capture every transaction is going to have every transaction. A student who says he's going to use a notebook or Excel or something manual ain't going to have all their transactions. It's just, it's just how it is. So good luck with that. I'm not telling you you can't do it, but I am telling you you will get deductions if you decide you're going to do it that way. Uh, so, again... If you want, if you use the budgeting tool here, you will have access to all the transactions. Whether you use one credit card, two credit cards, a debit card, and a credit card, it'll all come right into the plan, just like it would if you used Mint.com. So I don't care what you use. What I do care about is that this semester you keep track of your spending because I'm going to ask for the transactions so that you can prove to me that you did that. Number two, I'm going to ask you for the categories and a, a graph of some kind, which you'll be able to do quite easily if you're using an app or if you're using Excel. So that's the data, the graph, and then finally in that assignment, I'm going to ask you to tell me what did you learn in doing this assignment. So again, don't forget uh, this week's uh, class collaboration. I want you to think about what would it mean to you to be debt free. That's your class collaboration, secret class collaboration for this week. So um, I hope that helps. And let's see, is there anything else? that I want to, I don't see any questions, no questions. I hope you guys are listening in the Zoom room. Any questions? Then let's say goodbye till next time. See you guys next week. Thanks for being here. I'm going to jump on over and end the live stream. I'm going to